Okay, so there are some diagnostic studies that you've uh, learned of already. Uh, the best, of course, to date is the MRI, both of the brain and the spine, to diagnose whether there's hydrocephalus there, whether there's syrinx there, to get a characterization of the crowding in the posterior fossa and, and the way that the posterior fossa appears. There are flow studies that can be done typically on MRI using this um, sequence that's called uh, the cine mode um, uh, MR. You can do electrophysiological studies, um, especially if somebody's got a foot drop, you might want to do uh, nerve conduction studies, for example, or EMGs or something. Uh, genetics, uh, because as we mentioned, there might be an occasion to look at some uh, syndromic forms of Chiari, uh, Cruzon syndrome, as I mentioned, uh, vitamin D resistant rickets or something like that, to where there might be an underlying cause for that. Uh, sometimes you might want to get a craniofacial consultation, especially if the, um, the facies, the, um, the appearance of the patient's um, face looks uh, distinctly abnormal. That would be a reasonable thing to do. Okay, these are some imaging studies across the board you can take a look at. And here's um, the Chiari, top left is the Chiari malformation. You can see the syrinx that forms here. Um, here you can see... Um, the descent of the, the brainstem, like all the way down here. Here you can see this kind of knuckling that occurs at the junction between the uh, cerebellum and the brainstem. Uh, again, same sort of situation here that you can see with this uh, syrinx in the middle of the spinal cord, the abnormal uh, brainstem findings here. And uh, here you're seeing a CT uh, myelogram. Now this is a study that's almost never done these days, but when I was um, at your stage, a medical student, and, and after as a resident, and even as a junior faculty, um, so 30 years ago, we were still doing these studies time to time to take a look at the posterior fossa and to see if the tonsils were descended through the uh, foramen magnum. And that would tell us whether or not there was a, a Chiari malformation there. So this is a mixture of uh, Chiari 1 and Chiari 2 images that you can see there. And um, the treatment, I'll just you know, skip right to the bottom line in terms of treatment. If you're seeing a patient with these uh, Chiari malformations, depending on whether it's Chiari 1 or Chiari 2, uh, Chiari 1, it's uh, posterior fossa decompression, uh, tonsillopexy are doing something to mobilize the tonsils, and duraplasty. Um, there's also a move afoot, uh, I'll get to the literature on this, to do the posterior fossa decompression as a bony kind of skull uh, decompression without opening the dura, without doing a duraplasty. And there's some data to suggest that that's um, not a bad treatment. It's a much uh, better tolerated uh, by the patient. And I'll show you some uh, studies that uh, indicate why that's not a, uh, you know, a, a wrong thing or it's not a bad thing to do in, in certain uh, circumstances. And then there's a, uh, the symptomatic Chiari 2 malformations, as mentioned with the myeloma men meningocele. The, uh, the treatment is not so much posterior fossa uh, decompression as it is a cervical laminectomy. I'll describe that in more detail to you, but most of the compression for Chiari 2 happens in the cervical spine as opposed to in the occipital bone area. And um, you have to really study your MRI scan to know whether the um, the tentorium, which uh, essentially is fairly horizontal in uh, in most uh, individuals, uh, but in Chiari two malformation, it's angled down towards the foramen magnum. But if it is, then you know that that's where the um, junction of the superior sagittal sinus and the lateral or the transverse sinuses is located. And if that's pulled way down towards the frame of magnum, you start opening that dura and you think that um, you could open way up into the posterior fossa. You're going to cut across the lateral or even the superior sagittal sinus, and that can be essentially catastrophic. So you, you definitely need to study your MRI scans in advance. Hey, everyone. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate keep our content available for medical students across the world.